The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus passed through towns and villages, teaching as he went and making his way to Jerusalem. Someone asked him, Lord, will only a few people be saved? He answered them, Strive to enter through the narrow gate. For many, I tell you, will attempt to enter, but will not be strong enough. After the master of the house has arisen and locked the door, then will you stand outside knocking and say, Lord, open the door for us. He will say to you in reply, I do not know where you are from. And you will say, We ate and drank in your company, and you taught us in our streets. Then he will say to you, I do not know where you are from. Depart from me, all you evildoers. And there will be wailing and grinding of teeth when you see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, and you yourselves cast out. And people will come from the east and the west, and from the north and the south, and will recline at table in the kingdom of God. For behold... Some are last who will be first, and some are first who will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, will only a few be saved. My brothers and sisters, this question posed to Jesus has continued to be posed time and time again for over 2,000 years of Christianity. In fact, I would even venture to say that it's probably the single most talked about thing amongst all Christian religions and denominations. But it has also become the greatest cause of division amongst all Christian denominations. We all know this, right? We all have friends of ours who might not be in communion with the Catholic Church. We all have friends of ours or a family of ours who might be uh, in another Christian denomination, Baptist, Christian, Lutheran, E-free, Methodist, you name it. We have all have friends and family members who are there, and we've all had those what seem to start out as conversations that end up as arguments, right? We've all had them before. What is Jesus doing to answer that question in our Gospel reading today? It starts off with that very simple question, but who will be saved is a question that even the people in Jesus' day and age wanted to know, right? Because if we look at the Old Testament in an entirety, we see that there are many different tribes and camps and groups of people who all thought that they were the one, right? They all had this uh, thing where they thought they were the chosen people. Well, no, it's not those people that were part of the Babylonian exile. It's these people who were drawn out of Egypt by Moses. And then later on, well, no, it's not those people. It's these new 12 tribes that were created. There's always this confusion around who are the chosen people, who are the people? Who is the Israel that God talks about so much throughout all of Scripture? Which is certainly an image of the church. So Jesus goes to talk about this and to help us to understand in a deeper way what Jesus' idea of salvation is. And yes, it is contained within the church. Jesus Christ established one church. There's no historian that can doubt that. Jesus did not say, let's go ahead and separate out about 2,000 churches and start with that, and then, no, it was one. One church led by Jesus Christ and then Peter, the first pope, and from then on the church branched out to start many other Catholic churches. And so the Catechism of the Catholic Church in paragraph 816 to 818 would tell us 
that yes, the fullness of what Jesus Christ established for the salvation of humanity is contained within the Catholic Church. But then the Catechism would also say that God is not uh, limited, that God can use us, that's right, God uses us, and the beauty of the sacraments that he invites us into in the church that Christ established, he invites us to help others encounter Christ to help others participate in salvation history, participate in the salvation of all humanity. But that means that all of us have a part in this, right? That means all of us, through the sacraments that we receive, through the sacrament of the Eucharist that we receive today, all of us are part of the missionary activity of the church to go out and to evangelize, to share our faith, and to bring people to Jesus Christ especially in and through, the catechism would say, the sacrament of baptism. Baptism as we know it, baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And this formula, we bring others into the fold of Christ and in the church. And God can, can offer salvation to whomever he wants to. But he uses this particular way through baptism. Because through baptism, then, it would create in us a greater desire for him. So the Catechism of the Catholic Church teaches us that, yes, it is contained in its fullness, and if you want the, in a sense, like the front door or the front gate, as Jesus' language is in the Gospel today, you go through the Catholic Church. Is there ways to go around through the back door, over the fence, and around the corner? Sure, but that's a lot of obstacles sometimes, right? So we, it's beautiful that we're a part of this. We have this front door entry into this kingdom of God, but Jesus, even using this image of the gate, says many will strive to enter through the narrow gate, but many also will not have the strength to enter through. The best analogy that I could come up with this week um, about this narrow gate was something like maybe a, a sporting event, a concert or a ball game, you know, in the beginning, they, before they open the gates, there's people everywhere, tens of thousands of people, and then when the gates are supposed to open at 1 o'clock or 1.15, all of a sudden everybody seems to go in, try to push their way through. Have you ever been in that line? I'm sure we've all been in one. Okay, maybe if you haven't been in one of those, one of my most terrifying experiences in life was going to Black Friday with my sister. Standing out in front of a Target or a Walmart or something like that, and all these people standing around, and it's kind of fun. It's 12 o'clock, and we're drinking coffee, and it's great. But then you hear this kind of a faint unlocking of a door. It's funny, all these people, and you can hear the unlocking of the door, and fear instantly strikes you. Oh, my gosh. And people just begin to rush in through these two doors that they open. You would think that they would open all ten doors. No, they open two. And everybody's trying to get through these two doors. That's the image I get when I, when I hear Jesus talk about striving to enter through the narrow gate. And what he, what he means when he says not all are going to be strong enough to make it through that gate, it means that there's, it takes effort. Encountering Jesus in salvation is not a one-and-done event. I'm sorry to say Many of our brothers and sisters, God loved them, God blessed them, but they think it's a one-type thing, altar call, come forward, accept Jesus Christ, and then go and live your life however you want to, but you accepted Jesus this one day, and it's a one-and-done thing. That's not at all what we hear Jesus say in the Gospel today, is it? If it was, that was what Jesus wanted us to understand, he would have said the kingdom of God is like this gigantic gate that's like 550 miles apart and everybody can fit through it. That's not what he said. It's a narrow gate. That not all will have the strength to get through that gate. These are tough teachings, by the way. These are tough teachings in the Gospel of Luke that for the next two or three weeks, they're going to get even more tough each week. Jesus had said at the beginning of the Gospel is headed where? He's headed to Jerusalem. What does Jerusalem mean? It means the cross. He's headed to his death. Jesus is in dire need of getting the message of salvation across to the people with absolute certainty. 
with determination. And so he tells us it's difficult. Many won't have the strength to be able to endure this. Why? Because salvation, as Jesus desires it for us, as Jesus has planned it for us, has to happen every day. Right? Every single day, we have to work on our salvation. It can't just be a mere acquaintance with Jesus. Every single day, our salvation is being etched out by the way we live our lives, by the way we follow the commandments, by the way we follow the sacraments and make use of this beautiful way that this gate that Jesus has opened up. Many church fathers have said that this gate Jesus is talking about is the sacraments themselves. Yes, the Eucharist. Yes, baptism, which incorporates us into the life of Christ. But what about your marriage? which is a sacrament. Have you ever thought about your marriage as being a gateway into eternity? I preach that often. That a husband and wife, it's your job to get each other into heaven. It's your job to help each other fit through that narrow gate. That means don't feed your husband so much for dinner, right? No, that's not what that means. But it means that it's going to be hard so we work together as a community to do that. But Jesus takes it even further and he tells a parable about a feast, right? So every time Jesus talks about a feast, it's always an image of the kingdom of God. Anytime Jesus talks about the kingdom of God, he connects it directly to a feast. He connects it to parables about a king throwing a feast for his son who got married. And they invited all these people and no one wanted to come, so then they went out into the alleys and the byways and invited the people Today Jesus says uh, the the kingdom of heaven is like a feast and he invites many people. And many people come and say, Lord, we know you. Shouldn't we be invited? And what did Jesus say in this parable? He says the king will say to them, I do not know you. My brothers and sisters, this is the key to salvation. We don't even realize the power in what Jesus is saying here sometimes, I think. What Jesus is saying, here's the, here's the key to that message there, is for, us to, it, for salvation to happen, for us to be able to enter through that narrow gate, is that we have to know Jesus Christ. Yes, it's a difficult teaching. Yes, it's hard to enter through that gate. But the way that Jesus offers us is relationship. The way that Jesus offers us is to know Him. To know Him means to be in relationship with Him. To know Him means to be celebrating Him in the sacraments. To know Him means to be loving Him in each other. To know Him is salvation. This is what Jesus is saying through this parable. He's talking about this banquet, this feast that the King of kings and Lord of lords is set before us on this altar, invited us to this. And when you come forward to receive communion, will Jesus say, depart from me, I don't know you? Or does Jesus say, I know you? Our first reading today, very beautifully, said that the Lord will gather those who He knows their, their thoughts. He knows their hearts. The only way that Jesus is going to know us is if we allow Him into us. If we allow Him to, through the sacraments and through the church to reach us, to touch those places of our lives in which we need Jesus more than anything. Our world needs Jesus more than anything right now. Instead of arguing about is there who's saved or are you saved or is it only 144,000 or is it however many number, Maybe it should be more of, do you know Jesus? Does Jesus know you? And how can we encounter Jesus in a deeper way through the sacraments? Through this way that Jesus says should be, for us, natural. This is the natural way that Jesus has established for us to be saved. Through knowing Him in a very personal and intimate way through the sacraments. So will there be many who are saved? The question that we are left with today. And Jesus says, do I know you? It will be difficult. 
You will have to work. It will require sacrifice. But if I know you, if I truly know you, then you will be welcome. If I know you, then you will be in this feast and invited to this feast. And we won't be thrown out with those, he says, depart from me, you evildoers. Evildoers. That's pretty strong language again, right? In the original Greek, evildoers is translated literally as doers of iniquity. Sinners. Again, Jesus has given us a natural way to enter the kingdom through him, through the narrow gate of confession. Through the narrow gate of confessing to God, who already knows, as our first reading said, right? He already knows our hearts. He knows our thoughts. He knows our actions. But he's given us a particular way to receive the grace that allows us to enter through that narrow gate. So as hard as the teaching is this weekend, my brothers and sisters, as hard as it is to share the truth of our faith, Jesus has called us into a deeper relationship with him through the sacraments, to encounter him in a deeper way through the Eucharist, through confession, through our baptismal call, and in a very unique and particular way for almost all, except for myself and the few that might be called to religious priestly life, in a particular way, to enter through that gate in the sacrament of marriage, to work on holiness and growing in virtue as husband and wife. It's a lot. Jesus is saying a lot to us this weekend. Jesus is requiring a lot of us. But I think if that question is on your heart like it's on mine, often, will many be saved? Then we have to work on this relationship. We have to strive to enter through that narrow gate and Jesus has given us the way. We know it. It's right here before us. Are we going to follow Jesus through the gate? That's really what it boils down to. Following Jesus through the gate or are we going to follow all these other things and have Jesus just be a mere acquaintance? Do you know Jesus? And does Jesus know you?